Hi. In this video, we're going to cover voltage and current sources. When simulating a circuit, you will almost certainly be using one or more of these elements, so it's really important to understand what the different options and configurations are. So let's get started up here in the DC sources section with the voltage source and the current source. DC means direct current. For our purposes, that just means they are unchanging sources of voltage and current over time. You can double click the elements to bring up the parameter box and change the voltage or current that element is sourcing. To see them in simulation, I'm going to add a ground to each of these. For the voltage source, I'm going to just name the note up here so I can probe it later. For the current source, I'm going to draw a wire loop here back to ground. Then I just click on simulate and go to DC mode. I do need to tell CircuitLab what I'm interested in seeing. There are two ways of doing this. I can manually add an expression, or I find it easier to just click on places in the circuit that I care about. So I'm just going to click on this name node, and I'm also going to click on this terminal of the current source. That's going to automatically add the current expression for the current flowing into this node. Then I click Run DC Solver, and as expected, the voltage at node 1 is 5 volts, and the current into the top node of my current source is 5 amps. Next, let's move on to the time-varying signal sources. I'm going to highlight and copy-paste, and drag these elements over to an empty spot. Then remove the DC sources and replace them with function generators. I also need to rename this node to something else. Let's just name it node2. Again, double-click an element to bring up the parameter box, and notice how we can change a bunch of characteristics of each function generator. I'm going to leave the defaults for both and hop over to the simulate tab so we can see them in action. Since these are sources that are changing over time, I need to do a time domain simulation. I can configure the start time, but time zero is usually a good place to start. I'm going to set my stop time to be two one thousandths of a second because my signal source is one kilohertz. This way I can see two full sine waves. Then again, click on the circuit to indicate which expressions I want plotted. Then click on Run Time Domain Simulation to simulate. Notice how I get two separate graphs, one for the current and one for the voltage. And they look like a sine wave of amplitude 1. Let's change some parameters so I can see the graphs change. I just hit Escape to hop back into build mode. Double click on a part to bring up the parameter box, and I'm going to change the function to a triangle wave, and let's add a DC offset as well. Quick tip, you can just hit F5 in CircuitLab and it'll rerun the last simulation you did. Here, we can notice that the volts graph is now a triangle wave instead of a sine wave. Its amplitude is still one, but it's centered around two volts instead of zero. The remaining types of sources are less common, so I'm not going to simulate them, just quickly talk about them. A current and a voltage step simply go from zero to a set value at a certain time. This is great for exploring the step response of a circuit. The CSV elements lets you create arbitrary functions by specifying the values at certain times. You can find more about this in the documentation. The last thing I want to touch on is using the voltage and current source elements as behavioral sources. I encourage you to read the documentation about this usage, but basically it means that instead of merely specifying a voltage or a current here, you can actually make this be an expression that depends on other things going on in your circuit. For example, this voltage could be equal to the current through some resistor R1 in my circuit times 5. It could even be dependent on the time variable T. The expressions can be arbitrarily complex and can even use if statements. This technique can be used to model complex parts of your circuit and it is a really useful tool to have in your bag of tricks. The documentation for behavioral sources can be found under the circuit elements section and there you can find a link to the full list of expressions that you can use. As always, if you have ideas for topics you would like us to cover in these videos, please let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching.